Hi, it's David Green, founder and CEO of R3 Stem Cell. Today we're going to be discussing stem cell therapy for Canada with R3 International. I know that there's a lot to consider when you're looking at whether or not to obtain a stem cell therapy. Um, it's relatively new technology compared to a lot of the old uh, traditional treatments and patient education is really key to helping you make appropriate and safe healthcare decisions for yourself, your loved ones. Um, in the U.S., we've been offering regenerative therapies for eight years now and over 15,000 procedures. We do really know what the most frequently asked questions are, so that's what I wanted to go through for you. So what I'm going to cover, what makes stem cell procedures different internationally compared with those in the U.S. and Canada? If you do live in Canada, why should you consider R3 for your regenerative care? What kind of biologics do we use? Where do they come from? How do they work? Could you reject the stem cell biologics? Will stem cells be a cure? Do the numbers of stem cells matter for treatment? What kind of outcome can you expect? How long will it last? What are the risks and side effects? And how do we come up with our pricing? Are there any extra fees or strings attached? So let's start with looking at what makes stem cell procedures different at our international clinics as opposed to the U.S. or Canada. Well, first of all, Health Canada has uh, made it illegal to offer stem cell therapy at all in Canada. So obviously that's a big difference. You can actually obtain a procedure as opposed to not. Now, from what I could ascertain, Health Canada does allow PRP therapy in Canada, but that is not a stem cell therapy. So anyone who tries to tell you that, oh, we offer a form of stem cell therapy called PRP, that's just not the case. And I've done videos about that. Um, you know, you can find them on our YouTube channel, but there's a huge difference between PRP and stem cell. So that's the first thing when it comes to, you know, if you're in Canada and looking for a stem cell therapy. In the U.S., you can obtain a stem cell therapy, but there's a difference between international and uh, U.S. biologics. The biggest difference is that internationally we can culture the biologics. We can amplify the amount of stem cells that you can receive very cost-effectively. Um, in addition, there are a lot of options with how we can apply those stem cells, meaning not only can we do an injection, we can also do IV, intrathecal, meaning into the spinal cord, uh, intranasal, um, intralymphatic, intramuscular. Um, there's just a lot of different things that we can do, and we've learned so much, um, you know, since we started eight, nine years ago, that we know what works really, really well and, and what doesn't. Um, in addition, as far as pricing goes, I'm going to delve into that um, uh, in a few slides, but one of the issues is that in the U.S., if you're going to try and obtain high stem cell counts, because you can't culture, you just have to use you know, more and more of non-cultured. And as far as pricing goes, it's going to be through the roof, you know, to get to 30 million or 50 million stem cells. So why consider R3 International in Mexico for your regenerative care? Um, well, first and foremost, you know, you can't obtain any of the procedures in Canada. You can get them in the U.S., but it's really pricey to get those high cell counts. We do have customized options. It's not one size fits all. As I mentioned, we can give them through many different means. Um, <clears throat> we often do them in conjunction with exosomes, which I'll explain in a little bit. And you know, everybody just doesn't get the same thing. Um, it's interesting because over 35% of our procedures in Mexico now come from referrals um, or you know, repeat treatments. The outcomes have been so, so excellent very, very safe. We do VIP escort transportation um, that a lot of patients are, are very excited with what they see and they want to come back, you know, at a certain period to, to get a better outcome, you know, build on it, or they just, you know, recommend us to their family and friends. We do offer a medical clinic setting. Um, in Tijuana, it's part of a, a medical building. And in Cancun, it's actually in a hospital. Uh, Mexicali is in a hospital too. So our safety history is unparalleled. The biologics quality is unparalleled. So it's unlike anything you can receive in, in, 
Canada or the U.S. So what kind of biologics do we use? Well, they originate from umbilical cord tissue, specifically the Wharton's jelly, which is the gelatinous matrix of the umbilical cord, which has very, very active mesenchymal stem cells. They are considered allogeneic, meaning they come from a donor as opposed to yourself. There is no rejection. I'll show you a couple slides here in a second. Scientists call that being immunologically privileged. You know, does not spark up a rejection reaction. It, the biologics have an amazing combination of mesenchymal stem cells, exosomes, hematopoietic stem cells. Now, exosomes um, I discuss in other presentations, but they are byproducts of stem cells. They're actually not cells themselves, um, but they contain a lot of proteins, RNA, um, and other components that are very active in cell-to-cell -cell communication. So for most conditions, we do include those um, because they can really, really help with getting your body ramped up um, with repair and regeneration. Um, and also what I explain in the exosome presentation is the fountain of youth phenomenon, um, which is amazing to see uh, how it was studied and how it works in real, real um, treatments. So where do the biologics come from? Just to delve in a little bit more. These are consenting donors after a scheduled C-section. Why do we do that? Well, first of all, it gives us time. Time to do the screening necessary to make sure that there's no communicable diseases in the donor. Um, also uh, gives us time to do a consent form and to get a higher yield. If you do a vaginal uh, birth, you know, the, the woman's amniotic fluid has been lost hours before when the water breaks. So, and also there's potential for uh, contaminants with a vaginal birth. This way it's a sterile procedure. Um, it's controlled and, you know, all of the amniotic fluid and the umbilical cord and placenta can be collected. Normally it's, it's medical uh, waste. So what we're looking to prevent, we're looking to prevent obviously communicable diseases, pathogens, bacteria. So here's an example of a product analysis certificate. Essentially what happens is the donor material gets processed and the FDA regulates that processing. During the processing, some of the tissue is sent out to a third party that's accredited. And what they do is they test for all of these, you know, disease entities as well as bacteria. And when the processing is complete, the tissue goes into a quarantine freezer for two to three weeks. And basically what we're waiting for is for the testing to come back um, for what you see here. Hepatitis, CMV, syphilis, um, hepatitis C, West Nile virus, all gram positive and gram negative bacteria. So it has to all be negative before it can be re released for treatment. Will it cause a rejection? The answer is no. Um, there's a lot of evidence backing that up. In our experience with, like I said, over 15,000 uh, stem cell procedures. So umbilical cord blood, umbilical cord tissue has been used for decades uh, for transfusions and for other types of procedures. Um, but when they use them for transfusions in some countries, they don't have HLA matching or ABO matching, and they've never had, never seen any adverse events. I mean, this study in between these five years on 129 patients showed no rejection um, with four years of follow-up. And then here's another study, donor to recipient ABO mismatch does not impact outcomes. So not only do you not need to check for ABO, you know, they call it cross-matching, or HLA testing as well. So it's just not, ne not necessary. So will stem cells cure your condition? The answer is no, they don't cure anything for what we're offering them for. Now, if you have a bone marrow transplant or umbilical cord blood for, for a cancer, which we don't do those procedures, you're going to get your immune system completely repressed um, and knocked out and then have, you know, these procedures. So that can be a cure for a cancer, but that is not what we're talking about here. If anyone tells you that they can cure your arthritis or kidney failure or whatever, it's just not true. Most likely, patients will eventually need a repeat treatment. It's not going to be in one or two weeks. It's not even going to be in a few months. It's going to be most likely one to two years later, or maybe even further out than that. 
And if you, when you do need a repeat treatment, we do offer significant discounts for those. Do the numbers of stem cells matter for treatment? The answer is unequivocally yes. Study after study show that uh, to a point, higher numbers are better, okay? And when you look at those actual numbers for anything from autism to kidney failure, COPD, whatnot, it usually adds up to between 1 and 5 million stem cells per kilogram, depending on the condition. So what happens is you get a free phone consultation with our medical director, and he will then um, look at your studies, talk to you, find out what other treatments you've had. And then um, it's either a protocol or it's a clinical judgment to do the math, okay? Now, we typically don't offer more than 100 million stem cells per any one procedure because it's, the concern is not that it's going to harm you, but that you won't, your body won't be able to use those um, at that time. So typically, we break that up if you need 200 million or more into either um, every other day or every third day, or you just come back every few months um, until we reach the, the number desired initially. What kind of outcome you expect and for how long? It really is a loaded question because people are different, their conditions are different, the severity of those, how your body is going to respond. What we've seen is that our overall patient satisfaction for all conditions combined averages 85% saying, yes, I would have this procedure done again or recommend it to friends and family. The outcomes are going to be much, much better than something like a steroid injection where the relief is only usually, if at all, two, two to three weeks. Usually patients say that they, they do well for over a year. Some conditions may need a repeat as much as every six months um, because it's just that severe and the stem cells are being used up and, and you know helping. Uh, but for end-stage liver failure, where there's no traditional treatments left, that may be what, what's needed. That's just one example. What are the risks? Well, these have been very safe procedures. And if you look at our safety standards and our safety history, it really is unparalleled. That is paramount. What we care most about is your safety. We've never had a rejection. We've never had a disease transmission. You know, in theory, that could happen. Um, there's an extremely low risk of infection. We've never seen a deep infection. Usually, they're minor to moderate types of side effects. Might be temporary low-grade fever, some dizziness or lightheadedness, chills or nausea. And what you see in our history, as well as the, the literature, the studies, is that these resolve usually within just 24 hours or less. I do want to mention that we do not use embryonic stem cells. Those are the ones that come from, say, uh, aborted fetuses. Uh, we've never used those. We also don't use induced pluripotent stem cells. Those are just not ready anywhere in the world for prime time use. They can cause tumors, they can cause rejection, and it just, you don't need that. We do really, really well with the mesenchymal stem cells. All right, so I just want to mention that we don't see any tumor formation with these procedures. Um, theoretically, I guess it could happen, but um, there's a lot of studies like this one that show Wharton's jelly stem cells do not induce tumors, um, unlike the embryonic stem cells, which we don't use. And, um, you know, we just, there's a lot of studies. We actually have a second consent form that lists like 10 really, really good studies. Um, it just, we don't see it. Yeah, here's another study showing that they don't exhibit tumor potential. All right, how do we come up with our pricing and are there any extra fees? Um, my goal since I started R3 International years ago was to give people the Mercedes of stem cell treatment for the pricing of a Ford. There's nothing wrong with the quality of a Ford. I just, using this as an analogy, um, uh, we want to give a really, really solid uh, procedure for a quality investment. And we've done that. We have a very high economy of scale um, with a lot of you know, locations um, and procedures being performed. And we transferred a lot of those savings onto patients. Our mission is to make effective stem cell therapy available to virtually anyone in need. Um, we only charge extra fees for things like sedation or if you need it into the spinal cord or other spinal type procedures. You know, for instance, for a child with autism, 
they're most likely going to need sedation. We just don't want them to pull out an IV or get agitated. So, you know, that has the extra fee. Um, but, the, but there's no bait and, and switch. Now, stem cell therapy for Canadians. Um, you just can't receive 30 million or more stem cells in the U.S. for under fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. So we've made that possible at our Mexico clinics for only $2,950 for 30 million cells, 50 million for 3,950, just an extra thousand. And for anyone who gets 50 million or more, um, at least for the time being, we are offering free exosomes, like 50 billion exosomes. 50 billion exosomes in the U.S. is probably going to cost you by itself around $5,000. So this is huge as an additional offering. We also now arrange for financing options, and this is with MediCard, which is part of iFinance Medical. I'll put the link in the in the description. Um, but you know they do provide financing to uh, Canadians um, to get treatment, you know, anywhere in Canada or the world. So our program includes three locations in Mexico: Tijuana, Cancun, and Mexicali. Uh, Tijuana is only 20 minutes from the San Diego International Airport. We offer transportation escorted from the airport to the clinic and back. Um, you can do it the procedure same day. You could stay overnight in San Diego if you'd like. Um, you know, we can help you with all those travel logistics. Cancun is beautiful. Um, there are often direct flights from Canadian cities to Cancun. We'll pick you up at the airport, uh, take you to the treatment center and the hotel. We have three, four, and five star hotels. And Mexicali um, is convenient as well. There's You can get flights directly into Mexicali. Or if you want to go to some place like Yuma, uh, we'll pick you up. The process starts with a free phone consultation with one of our experienced stem cell doctors. We can help you obtain medical records um, and make the process seamless and very, very easy. Um, once again, your patient concierge representative will assist you with all your travel logistics including the uh, travel from the airport to the clinic and back. All right, I just want to mention uh, things about the cells. We have a pristine safety record worldwide. Our quality assurance um, in the U.S. is regulated by the FDA. Um, in Mexico, we took a long time to find a lab whose quality assurance exceeds the FDA standards, and they have over 95% viability. So if you know, a lot of clinics will say, oh, we're going to give you 30 million stem cells. Well, that's before the cryopreservation, the 30, 40 percent loss of viability. No. With the way that our processing occurs, you don't lose more than 5 percent viability. So you're getting what you're paying for. OK. And we keep these below the fifth generation so that there's minimal issues with mutation or being non-functional or, or things like that. Uh, recently, we won the USA's Leading Regenerative Therapy Services provider. We won a lot of awards. Um, you can see here we've been featured on all the major media, uh, as well as in Forbes, Entrepreneur, 50 Smartest Companies, 10 Best Companies of the Year, 10 Most Innovative. Um, and, you know, we just keep improving um, based on customer feedback, patient feedback. The process is easy. You can visit us online, r3stemcell.com. And you can give us a call directly at uh, the USA prefix, plus one, same as Canada, 888-988-0515.